Hello, I am Dana Williams, president of Orchard and Grove, and I want to welcome you to our Nomad Login AD webinar. If you have any questions during the webinar, please ask them through the Q&A button. We may not be able to answer all the questions in the next hour, but we'll get to as many as we can. I want to thank you for all of your continued interest in our open source software development. Leading you through No Low AD today is Josh Weisenbaker, head of engineering and co-owner of Orchard and Grove. He's run point on this project since starting with us in November, and he's an amazing addition to our team. Josh, I'll let you take it from here. All right, thank you, Dana. And as she said, I am the head of uh, engineering now here at Orchard and Grove. I joined in November coming from Apple, uh, just as Joel, uh, our founder did. Uh, and similar tenure, same group at Apple, things like that. So uh, I have a lot of experience in the enterprise areas and, and enterprise app dev. And at Orchard and Grove, we really have been focusing on trying to fill the holes that uh, we saw in the enterprise Mac software market. But today we're going to talk about Nomad and Nomad uh, Login AD, which is our newest product. And so just for a bit of review, in the beginning of the 2000s at least, not that long ago, Active Directory showed up on the scene. Now, Active Directory is Microsoft's directory service. It is out there for doing things like sharing information to multiple computers, giving you easy ways to log in, things like that. Since 10.3 on the Mac, Apple has supported binding Macs to Active Directory. An Active Directory then allows the Macs to authenticate to the directory. And in theory, you can just have the same user account on all your different devices. In practice, we have a mixed kind of uh, scenarios out of this though. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it forgets it's bound. Sometimes you get lots of pinwheels and logins and spinning kinds of uh, uh, delays trying to unlock screens and things like that. So it's kind of sometimes a mess. Now, Active Directory has a whole bunch of bits and pieces to it. It's got LDAP, Kerm Kerberos are the main two. There's lots of data inside there. There's lots of things that it, that it does that we don't necessarily need to do all the time when all we really want to have is single sign-on for our users. We want users to be able to type in a username and password and then have access to the services uh, that they need. And different services come with single sign-on, like websites, file shares, things like that. And that way you don't have to keep typing your password and your username over and over again to be able to log in. So with that in mind is how Nomad came to be. Nomad is, we like to say, everything you like about AD, but without that bind in there. So Nomad allows you to get all the same basic single sign-on information that you would get with binding to Active Directory. You get your single sign-on through Kerberos, same thing with password expiration warnings, password changing, uh, local password policies and things like that. We also synchronize the password to the local account password. And this way the users only have one password that they have to think about. It's all manageable with profiles and MDM, and it's pretty easy to use. Under the hood, it's got a very basic operations in that it looks up the records for the domain controllers and things in DNS. It then uses Kerberos to actually authenticate the user and is able to look up information in LDAP. This is exactly what Windows clients do. So this was initially has been built into Nomad. But as we started looking to branch out uh, with our product line, we decided that it'd be easier if we took that info and we put it into something else. And so we came up with uh, this fun flaming guy here. Uh, this is the framework version of Carrie the Caribou, who seems pretty angry about stuff. But we came up with an 80 framework to use with Nomad Nomad Login, uh, Nomad Login Pro, Nomad Pro, uh, all the different products that we have. And what this allows us to do is share our code around. Now, 
some of you that have done programming in Swift, this may be something that you're interested in. And frameworks in Swift are still a little clunky. Um, you have to build everything at the same time. You have to build the frameworks on the same machine that you build your app on. And so we've taken that into consideration and uh, we're using Carthage right now for uh, anyone that wants to consume the Active Directory framework from Nomad. The way it works is pretty simple. And Joel covered a lot of this uh, recently at Macaduck conference, but you have your app and then there's all the bits and pieces that make a Nomad session out there. Everything wraps up together and becomes the very fancy uh, Nomad 80 framework. So it's Nomad 80 auth is the name of this. It's another open source part. It's essentially we've taken all the AD code out of the inside of Nomad and we've made it available in a modular form so that any app author can add the same site aware uh, user uh, administration to their apps. So it manages all your AD interactions. We have all the same features that we have in, um, all the same features we have in Nomad for AD currently we have here as well. It's entirely open source, just like all of our AD products. Uh, we use the built-in Mac Kerberos APIs. We use Open LDAP, and it's pretty easy to get started with this. The Nomad AD uh, auth framework is going to be undergoing a, a fairly large revision shortly, in which we're going to add in uh, a lot more um, modernization to the framework uh, as it's come out of that. That's part of my job here at Orchard and Grove is to make sure that we keep up with our coding practices and things like that. And one of the main things I've been working on is Nomad Login. Nomad Login, we've got two different versions uh, that are out there currently. We've got Nomad Login AD, which is our open source product. We also have Nomad Login Plus Okta, which is a uh, pay product that's currently in beta uh, to allow you to do Okta authentication at the login window as well. So Nomad Login AD is really, it's a very good companion tool to Nomad because when we talked earlier, about the password syncing, there isn't any account syncing. So you may have your Nomad password, the local account password on the Mac match your AD password, but the usernames might be totally different. So the local username could be fluffybunny32, while the uh, AD name could be joel.renick at nomad.local. So it's easier to have one password, but it's even easier than that to have just one set of credentials that anyone has to remember. Nomad Login AD can do just-in-time provisioning to make that possible. A lot of people are interested about how we're hooking into the Mac login process, and it actually is a publicly available API um, through the security authorization frameworks. And we make an authorization plugin we just are plugging into the existing login process. We aren't replacing any parts of it. Uh, we are making authorization mechanisms that the OS will execute along the way. We're not taking any of the, uh, the default parts out, except for just calling up the Apple login window UI. It's the only piece we take out. And all mechanisms have to agree before login happens. So we are still making the OS go through and do all of its regular checks. What this allows us to do is that the login window itself now makes that connection to Active Directory and can authenticate users rather than having to bind the entire machine to AD to be able to go out and look at those users. The plugin is just, like I said, it's existing environment and the OS actually does the validation of local users. So if you have a local user login, it's gonna just go through its regular process. We simply set the information needed for the OS to finish the login process and it takes over and does it for us. Now Nomad Login AD really kind of adds three critical features that we think uh, here. One is that create a matching local user. When you log in and it goes out to AD, looks up your user record there, attempts to authenticate with the credentials you gave it to Active Directory, once that happens, we're able then to 
create on the fly a local account that matches that AD account in both username and password. We pull all the account information from Active Directory so it all matches just fine. Another feature we have is we can demobilize an existing user. Machines that are bound to Active Directory now typically have what's used uh, called a mobile account on them. And that's a cached copy of, an, of a user's AD account local on the machine. Now what we can do is if you're looking to unbind from Active Directory or even just want to use Nomad instead of logging in as an AD user, you can set an optional mechanism in Nomad Login to go ahead and turn that mobile account back into a locally authenticated account. That way you don't get the pinwheels and things like that. Another feature that we have is we can work with our MDM policies to do the enable file vault uh, on APFS volumes only right now, but it is file vault enabled on first login. There's no log out, there's no reboot required. And I'll get into more details on that in just a moment. So as I said, there's a lot of login mechanisms that are part of the default operating system. This is the standard list. All these different things have to agree to let a user in to allow a user to be logged in. The only one we remove from this list is that first login window one, the one that says login window login. We take that out and then we put insert our own mechanisms there to go ahead to be able to work with the rest of these. So there's seven different mechanisms right now uh, total in the Nomad login AD package. Generally, the four that do a lot of the heavy lifting are the check AD module, the create user, the demobilize, and the enable FDE. We have three kind of much more specialist ones as well, power control, log only, and Sierra fixes. Power control is a mechanism that its only purpose is to make the shutdown and restart buttons on the login window screen work. Log only is for diagnostics. It allows you to output extra logging information. And Sierra fixes is to work around some issues that you might run into when using this on 1012. Uh, High Sierra is the preferred deployment target, but we do have uh, accommodations for uh, regular Sierra as well. Excuse me. Now to look at all of these in a little more depth here so you can see what they're doing. Check AD really is the, the biggest and most involved of the mechanisms. It owns the login UI that comes up, the login window. It also does the first user check locally. If it doesn't have a local user, it, it can initiate the AD query then and then return those results back on the user's credentials. It also can respond to and present UI for uh, required password changes. So if you have a new user or a password's been reset and you've set off the you know, required user to change password on next login, we respond to that uh, as we should at the login window. It also handles the special user selection. Uh, special users are used in login window apps so that we can do things like the restart and shutdown buttons is how that works. This then after it gathers all the data, it sets the authentication values that are needed uh, and then it will pass on to the next mechanism. In our case, the next mechanism is our create user mechanism. Like it says in the name, this creates the local account. It uses the name and the password that the user entered and it uses the other information that it pulled from Active Directory. Right now we are just using the first available UID on the system for the user's uh, UID. Uh, we've got a feature coming to, we're gonna look to generating UIDs with the same algorithm that the Apple AD plugin does, just so you've got some consistency there. We create the home folder here. We go through, we look at the locale of the Mac, and then we go through and we pick the appropriate localized home folder for uh, the wherever the Mac is. For the account, we set all the same options uh, that are set by the OS when creating an account, either in preferences or with uh, sysadmin control. 
So we set all the same attributes. We even do the differences between Sierra and High Sierra. There are a couple of attributes that are different on each uh, OS. We make sure to match those to the current running version. And then we have an option that you can allow the user creation as admin to happen as well. Uh, by default, we don't create admin users at the login window. We just create regular users. It then passes on to Demobilize. Demobilize, if you're logging in with the local user and you want to remove that caching, it checks for an AD Mobile account. It does this by looking for a cached authentication authority of the type AD. If we find that and you've elected to do this, it's going to remove the cache attributes, removes the external account file, which is just a file called .account, which is in the user's home directory. Essentially, it's a mirror image of the general directory services account for that user. We leave the bind active directory intact, though. And that's because unbinding from AD is a very specific and discrete kind of uh, purposeful move by an administrator. And if you have elected to not unbind from AD, yet you have elected to switch back to local accounts, it's probably because you have a reason why. Uh, most of the time when we see people leaving Nomad machines bound to AD, it's for either machine certificates or it's for DFS resolution. Um, so that we don't want to be presumptive here and do that and remove that feature. Enable FDE mechanism enables File Vault too. Uh, we use FDE setup under the hood to do this. We do support fully the MDM escrow uh, program so that if you use MDM escrow for keys, our keys will be picked up by that as well. Uh, and kind of a neat feature that we have on APFS is there's no reboot required. Uh, as soon as you log in, it starts encrypting. Uh, and the time we do this is with the DEP enrollment and so that we're the first user in. And I'll explain that in some more details and then we'll have our demo of that shortly. For a basic workflow of how this all fits together, uh, when a user goes to log in, the very first thing that happens in NOLO is that it says, is this a special user? Uh, the special users are simply users that are known to the app and they have very specific uh, use cases. Uh, in our case, it's either once someone clicked one of the power control buttons. In that case, we take the power action. After that, if it's not a special user, then it will take a look and say, is this a local user? So we, we then check the local directory services to see if this is a username that already exists on that Mac. If it is, then we have to make a decision. Do we demobilize this account or do we leave it alone? And if we do demobilize it, we convert it to a local account and then we go ahead and we just go on through to the desktop by uh, setting a login permission. If we aren't gonna demobilize it, then we just go ahead and pass on to the next mechanisms. We leave the account as it is and we go through to the desktop. If it is a local, isn't a local user though, we're gonna to attempt to authenticate to Active Directory. So we'll start up the Active Directory process. We will reach out and connect to it. Assuming that the user has entered in the correct username and password uh, for AD, we'll get that information back, validate they have the right credentials for that user. We'll create the user then, and then we'll complete our login uh, all the way through to the desktop again. Overall, it's very simple. We just check uh, the specific uh, attributes for the account that we're looking for along the way. Now, I, there's a lot of decision tree sort of stuff going on here. And the way we control that is with our preference domains. And of course, all these work with MDM. All these work with configuration profiles as well. So right now, we have a, a couple of different managed preferences you can set for uh, Nomad login. One's the AD domain, so that you don't have to type the at domain name on the end of a user's login. We have the ability to create admin users when we create local users. We have the option to you know, select whether you want to demobilize the user or not. We then have some uh, options around uh, 
full disk encryption, whether you want to enable it or not. And if you are enabling it, do you want to generate the recovery key for the escrow uh, to pick up? So that takes a combined MDM file vault payload with our payload, one so that we generate the FDE, their payload will then pick it up for the escrow. We also have the ability to require SSL over um, LDAP. If you do go down this, this route though, you have to make sure that all your certificates are trusted and installed at the proper times with the certificate chains. Otherwise, NIMAD will refuse to communicate to LDAP uh, if it can't verify the certificates. To make this easier for people who already have Nomad, uh, wherever it's appropriate, we have the ability to share preferences there. So if you have Nomad preferences already set for the AD domain or for LDAP over SSL, Nomad login will pick those preferences up and use them automatically. That way you don't have to uh, set these same settings twice. Uh, so that's just a little a bit of extra help there we can give to the admins. Now, a big question for a lot of Mac uh, deployments these days is are you using DEP or are you not using DEP? There are some distinct advantages uh, to using DEP uh, with Nomad Login. We have good DEP support. Uh, what you would do is in your DEP workflow, you would create a hidden local admin and then not prompt the user to create any other user. Install any needed certificate trusts, install the Nomad Login AD bundle, install any managed Nomad uh, settings as well. And then MDMs that support the await device configuration command in their DEP profiles, um, you're done. Because at that point, by the once the, the device signals it's completely configured and releases the assistant, you'll just go straight to the NOLO window the very first time that you boot the machine. If a MDM doesn't support await device configuration, then you may need to have an additional step in there to do a kill all on login window to reload, um, to reload our, our login window after you're done. Uh, most people are doing that just with a, a post-flight script in the installer package. If you're not using DEP, you still have most of the same ways you set it up. You still need to install your, your CA trusts. You still need to install the app and your logins. You can still create new users just fine. Um, you can still demobilize existing users, but you're going to need to rely on MDM for your file vault at that point because on 10.13, as most Mac sysadmins know, there's a thing called a secure token. And the reason we can use that secure token is the first user that logs into the machine gets a secure token automatically. So that's how with DEP, the first login gets, gets a token and that way it works with Nomad login. And I'll give you a demo of all this in just a moment. Nomad login AD, like I said, it's open source. Uh, Nomad login AD itself is mostly mechanisms um, and UI. The, all the AD stuff is coming from the Nomad AD framework. Uh, and we have instructions for how to build all that on the project page. So if you were to look out there at, to go to Orchard and Grove's uh, open source projects page, we have Nomad login AD project there and you can download, uh, download a beta download the production version, which right now is 1.0.0. You can also download um, and build from source if you want to. And now we're gonna take a look here and add a quick demo. So I'm gonna switch machines here real quick. All right, and so now we have switched over to a uh, High Sierra Mac. This is a first boot. We're at the login window. And what we can do now is we can step our way through here. So we are in the United States, or I am anyway. 
want to use the US keyboard. Here is our managed enrollment where it says Orchard and Grove is going to take this over and manage it. So I'm going to click continue and then wait a moment here. Since I'm going through my VM, then through a VPN to a virtual VPN host endpoint, it will take you a second to enroll the device and then we'll be able to move on from there. Remember, you can hit any uh, questions into the Q&A as well that you have, um, and we can get to all those at the end of our presentation. All right, so it's enrolled now in MDM. I can select my time zone, which for me is Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And then continue through, and it's going to set up my Mac. I've used DEP to suppress the rest of the screens here so there isn't anything else happening. Um, the user just logs in, where are we, and we're good to go. So now is when it's holding for configuration as it's installing uh, our packages. And now, right after the setup assistant, we've got the Nomad login, login screen. Taking a look here, you can see uh, just username, password. We've got our shutdown, restart buttons. It's all pretty simple. Uh, the username, you can tell I've got a managed domain installed because it doesn't have the at domain hint text. We take that hint text out. So I'm going to enter in a, a the AD user. And if I've typed the password correctly, it will take off now and log in. We usually get a, a you'll get a failure immediately if it doesn't work. But since I said, like I said, we're on a very slow VPN here. So there it goes. Um, so we've authenticated to Active Directory with that user's credentials, validated that they're okay. Nomad is Nolo is now creating a local user account. It is copying in the localized home folder based on the locale I set earlier. Then it's going to move that home account, the folder into place and set everything up. Now you can see we've logged in. So I'm just through to a login window like normal. If I were to go look at the user account, you can see that it's just a standard user account. There's nothing fancy here. I can go look though at File Vault and you can see I'm already encrypting. So this way I'm already encrypting and it's going to uh, finish that up and then it'll be all set to go. This machine's now enrolled in MDM. If I can look at my profiles, you'll see that I've got my, my MDM enrollment profile, my NOLO settings that I've set down. And then the, that works with the File Vault escrow settings that I can also get from MDM. If I wanted to, I could log in, I could log out here just to show you. And I can also log in as a regular administrative user. So local users are always allowed to log in. This is just the local administrator that was created hidden on the Mac. So you still have access to your local admins and you're able to log in as them. You can see now I'm logged in as the admin user instead of the local user that we created. So we maintain all of that control and we allow you to be able to take over your login window experience. The advantage again of this is that now when we use Nomad to keep everything in sync after the initial creation, the username, the account details, and the passwords match to begin with. So that way you don't have to uh, worry about building out a bigger uh, support issue. When you have users that have two different names with the same password, it can be confusing for them sometimes. 
and this heads that off at the pass. So I'm going to switch back to my uh, keynote now. If I can find it. There it is. One moment as I fight with Zoom. All right, there we go. We've got a roadmap out there that has a couple different things. Um, version 1.1 is coming soon. Uh, we've got vegetable themes uh, for our, our code names on Nomad Login AD. Uh, 1.1 is coming. It's going to add in a Mac OS style login screen rather than a login window uh, like we have there as an option. A better failure UI. Um, right now, it just kind of clears itself and comes back. Uh, we're going to add in a, an animation so that you can clearly see what happened with your login. Also, the generated UID option, which will be able to generate matching UIDs. Um, uh, from for the uh, Apple AD plugin. So if you have existing mobile accounts, that way any new accounts get generated the same way, and users will have the same UID across different Macs, just like they do with the Apple plugin. Version 1.2 is following after that, adding a sleep button back in, which is far more complicated than you can possibly imagine to add a sleep button at the login screen. Um, we're going to work on that. The ability to customize the UI for corporate branding or other things like that. And also a stretch goal for one too is the ability to have VPN on demand with the per app VPN at the login window. Um, we're still, we're in initial discovery phases of this, but it's a planned feature that we have and that's able to, being able to have the login window make a VPN tunnel so that it can connect and uh, to your domain if you aren't on the domain. So we're working on that, and that's kind of a sneak peek of the next two point releases. Uh, you can always see these on our GitLab page in the milestones section. So you're able to quickly just jump on and take a look at those. Um, they do change sometimes. They aren't set in stone. Things get bumped or you know from one milestone to the next. You can also look at all of our open issues uh, and file any issues you find or file any um, feature requests that you may have at that point. So, as I said, if you have any uh, bigger questions, you can you always email uh, us at sales at nomad.menu or find us in the Mac admin uh, Slack in the Nomad login channel or the Nomad channel. And we are always there to uh, help out. And we have a lot of very enthusiastic. Um, early adopters of this who have been testing our upcoming 1.0.1 release, which has some Sierra fixes in it. And we, I would like to thank those early adopters for all the support they've given us with being able to test in different environments. And we could take a look at some of these questions that are coming in. All right, Josh from Pixel2 is asking, can we bind the Mac with Azure AD? Azure AD is a really big question. We get that a lot. Yeah, uh, not yet. We're working on it. Um, Azure AD, Azure actually has a, Microsoft has some nice uh, authentication libraries to work with. Um, the thing that they don't do, though, is they do not allow any of the client-side stuff, uh, software, to know the password, which makes it a little bit tricky. But we, we are working on it. It's definitely all of the major authentication um, providers are on our roadmap. We currently have Nomad Login Plus Okta, which is uh, in beta testing right now. Uh, and that allows you to have a two-factor Nomad Okta login at the login window. So instead of AD, it works with, with Okta and we support all the, the MFAs that they do. Um, they were the easiest one to implement and the one that have been requested a lot. We're also looking at going with um, Azure, and we're also investigating Google logins as well. So they're, they're on the roadmap for uh, future releases, but we, we aren't there yet. So how does no low AD 
deal with the keychain. Say we still bind to AD and update the password elsewhere. What happens on a machine that the user has not yet auth-ed with their new password? Does keychain minder play a part? Yes, uh, we see very much this is part of a nomad and nomad login deployment combo. Um, most of the time, the, you know, if you've already got nomad login going, you, nomad login takes care of the initial creation process. Once the user has a local account, it doesn't authenticate to the network anymore at the login window. It just uses the local account, and then you can use Nomad to keep everything in sync, uh, which is just like what happens today for Nomad users. It's just we're giving you a way to do the just-in-time account provisioning uh, right, up the, right off the bat. And then once you're in, Nomad can keep everything synced up between your keychain, your AD, your file vault, and your local user account just like it does today. Is Okta and Second Factory available now at the login screen? Okta is available now. Um, we have a early release of it that you can uh, download and try from the Nomad login page. Uh, like our Nomad Pro Okta product, it is a, it is a commercial uh, product, so we are gonna have licenses available for it. Um, Nomad, the AD products we have are the open source ones. Uh, if we go to other identity providers, then it's a, you know, it's a per seat sort of license. Uh, but we do have that available today for testing, and we uh, hopefully I'll have a production version of that out uh, pretty shortly. So could you elaborate on how it goes about creating the local account when it's not near the DC and how uh, it attempts to reconcile with AD when it's near proximity. Okay. Uh, if I understand that question correctly, when we have, um, you have to be able to see the network, to see the domain controllers, to authenticate to the domain controllers. Um, strictly because that's, I mean, if you can't see AD, you can't talk to it, then there's nothing we can really do at that point. Um, as long as you can get to a domain controller, though, in your domain, will authenticate to it. We use all the same uh, sites and services and link topology uh, intelligence that we have in Nomad. We have built into Nomad login as well, and that's because of the AD framework that we use. So it will find the site, it'll find the closest domain controller, we'll look at all the, the weights on the DCs, and we'll also do LDAP pings uh, to determine the best one to use. These are all just following Microsoft's Active Directory integration um, protocols. So once it's authenticated in, then it creates the user account. Uh, and like I said, at that point, Nolo does not uh, attempt to uh, talk to AD again. Uh, it just says, oh, local account, log you in, and then Nomad keeps everything in sync at that point. We have, in, we, we have been investigating, sorry, Dana. We, we have been investigating the ability to make it always talk to AD um, instead of just using the local account. But at that point, we're getting into the same realm of timeouts and pinwheels that the Apple uh, Active Directory plugin is at. The real advantages of using Nomad is that you can use Nomad with a local account. And so we have initially targeted uh, Nomad login AD at being what creates those local accounts for Nomad to then manage. Can AD groups of users be nominated as admins on machines by default, e.g. log in as domain admin, and it is created as a local admin? Uh, that's a feature request, and we're gonna sort that into, that we already have, we're gonna sort that into a, um, into one of the road, the milestones coming up. That's a fairly easy one since we already have all your group information. So we, the idea is that we would have it similar to the way that the um, Active Directory plugin works now where you can, you can tell it what groups in AD should also be local admins. And that way when, it, when someone logs in and it creates the user account, it would say, hey, they're in a group that's supposed to be admins and it would put them in the local admin group. So yes, that's, that's, that's a coming feature. How does one create the account at first if students have not logged in yet? 
the local administrator account, it would be created through DEP. Um, and then after that, you can use the, you can use Nomad to log in with their Active Directory accounts. If you aren't using DEP, you can also just have a, a regular lab Mac for say that you've logged in with. You can install Nomad Login AD and log out and then users can log in with their accounts at that point also. When demobilizing an existing mobile user, are there any special steps that need to be taken to ensure the existing user folder data have correct permissions? No, we, we take care of that for you. Uh, we don't change the UID or the UUID of the user. Um, so first of all, that should be fine. And then on top of that, we also run a, a permissions repair on the home folder just to double check and validate that everything is set correctly. So we aren't changing the ownership of anything at all. Uh, we're just creating a local user, uh, essentially removing the bits and pieces from a mobile account that connect it to Active Directory to make it a local only account. And then at that point, uh, there's not a lot left to do, but we do run a repair on the home anyway, just to be safe. All right, this is also a kind of a popular question, but does Nomad handle 802.1x Wi-Fi authentication, as in will it push the password through? So Nomad in, uh, in general can do 802.1x as long as you are using user certificates instead of computer certificates. Uh, this is something that's been on our roadmap for Nomad for a while now, and uh, we're looking at ways to do that uh, to get that there as well. Uh, once we get there with Nomad being able to do 802.1x from machine certificates, um, then we'll be able to bring that same support over into Nomad login, but it's it's got to come to Nomad first. Uh, we've been working some with uh, some of our other fellow indie developers and have been having some solutions getting closer and closer on that. But again, on the roadmap, but um, Nomad can handle the 802.1x certificates once you log in. Nomad login uh, can do that eventually down the road, but we need to get the get them working with Nomad first. What happens if a user enrolls a device with DEP from a network that cannot reach AD? Uh, it won't let you authenticate uh, until you or on the network with AD. Um, so in that case, you wouldn't be able to, to log in uh, unless they knew the local admin account that you had set up. But as I said, that's in our use case with an AD login, that's the expected uh, behavior. If you were to use the Apple AD plugin and bind it to Active Directory, then take it off the network and hand it to a user they can't log in with their AD password there either. Uh, and, then, and the same goes for open directory as well. Um, so that, that would be, it's this, we're the same behavior there as any directory service. Can we lock down to only allowing users in specific AD? In specific AD groups, uh, we could. We could take a look at that as well. And that would not be a difficult feature request to add. Uh, I assume that would be in, be similar to the uh, Apple login window ACLs that they have. Um, we interoperate with most of the login window features as they are. Um, so things like the Apple policy banner and such like that, those should all still function as they have before. And it's just that one main login window from Apple gets replaced with our one main login window. Um, Login and the login progress and the, the polish on that is uh, something that we're now moving into as well with releases that are coming to make sure it's of the same uh, quality experience from a, a spit shine sort of uh, scenario that the Apple one is. Adrian, I saw that you missed your question on the 802.1 query. We will definitely uh, get back to you so you can have it in text and don't worry about it. We will catch up with you. Um, Rio is asking, is there a plan for usage with a proxy server for AD, like Jamst 
JIM, which allows us right now during account creation at DEP to validate off. Um, it, that would just be up to whatever the MDM you're using is. If you're using Jamf with the with the AD connector or any other um, service that's connected to AD, that that authentication happens at the during the DEP workflow in Setup Assistant where it asks you to authenticate. Um, you notice that I skipped that in my demo, mainly because I'm then having to authenticate later at the login window. Um, it, that is up to the back end of the MDM server to handle, and that all comes into play before we get to uh, the Nomad login window. That's still in the setup assistant stages of the login process. Keith is wondering if there's a 1.2 time frame. 1.2 time frame. Um, 1.2 time frame. Uh, I'd have to go look at my my notes. It's sometime. Uh, the longest window on it is into the first or second week of April. Um, the feature that is that could would most easily be get pulled forward would be the ability to replace the the login window customization. So if that is something people are interested in, then we can certainly look at pulling that forward into a earlier milestone. Um, just trying to keep realistic milestone goals based on what's in there. And it depends on how much, uh, how quickly development gets to move along. So um, I think it's mid-April for 1-2, it's end of March for 1-1. One, one. All right, in 10.13 plus, how can we add a local admin user to the Mac during provisioning, but still ensure that when the end user logs in, they will get the secure token for Vilefault? Well, if you are using our system and you use our FTE enable process, um, they'll get it. Because like we said, it's the first, the admin user has one, then the first user that logs in to the Mac gets one. It's kind of a, it almost feels like a cheat code that Apple has in there. Um, so the first user that logs in, whether they're an admin user or a local user, as we found out, gets a secure token. Uh, and that allows them to log in and authenticate. And that's what we showed in our, in our demo today. Uh, additional users after that, will be the same as MDM uh, file vault and they'll need an admin to authenticate to allow them to be added to the secure token list. All right, so we have someone who says, I know you said that no low AD doesn't persistently check AD at every login like the Apple AD plugin does at every login. However, there may be circumstances where that might be necessary such as when an AD account has been disabled. So is there a way to force no low AD to check in with AD to prevent a user from logging in? We don't have a force setting in no low AD right now. We do have a force setting in no low uh, plus Okta to require Okta authentication each time. Um, Okta is a little bit easier to require each time because it's just an internet API. It isn't... Uh, requiring you know good connect connectivity to the VPN to the domain controller and things like that we could easily add that in if it's something that people are interested in if they have a scenario where they always have good connected access and they're not worried about uh, being able to get logged in or not it certainly would not be difficult to add um, if I could have you uh, add a feature request on the project page uh, for that then we can take a look at that and uh, screen it into an appropriate milestone. We're Is just it worried. Oh, go ahead. Oh, oh, sorry. We're just worried that we don't want to. We don't want to take the Apple AD plugin and use Nomad to to get away from its issues, uh, and by using a local uh, account, only to turn around then and still require that constant network authentication, which is the source of a lot of the frustration with the Apple AD plugin, but. But yes, we can certainly take a look at it for, you know, known good networks or lab machines that are on wired Ethernet that never get disconnected or different things like that. It's certainly something we could look at. We could also help with maybe possibly other scenarios around that. 
Is it possible to trigger per app VPN doing the DEP authentication window so end user can bind Mac to on-premise AD remotely? Uh, we're looking at that. That's something that's a stretch goal for the one, two milestone um, for cruel cabbage. So we're taking a look at that. Um, it's all very interesting when you're running in the login window area because you aren't your own app. You're actually running as a plugin to the security agent on the Mac. So we're working through the exact steps we would need to do that. Um, and, but we, we have a high degree of uh, confidence that we'll be able to do that eventually. But yes, that, that is a goal is so that you could install those profiles with MDM during DEP. And then if the machine can't connect to the domain controller, it would be able to connect a VPN to get to the domain controller. Uh, not currently shipping today though, but planned. Stephen would like to know if the login window customization will be part of Nomad Login plus Okta as well. Yes, any of the base features you see in AD login, um, those, will, those will also show up in, in Login plus uh, AD. Uh, I mean, Login plus Okta or plus any other version of uh, the login window. We have a, a core framework and a core UI that's shared uh, largely between all the products, and we are working on making it uh, so that we can have one base build that has all the features, and then we can provide different authentication methods uh, as needed by customers behind that. In the DEP scenario, do or will we have a practice guide for MDM configuration and no low AD? Yes. That is definitely part of our plans. Um, I've been building developer-based documentation as I go along. Uh, it's in the wiki on the project page, but being able to have, you know, quick and easy, you know, if you use simple MDM, if you use Jamf, if you use uh, AirWatch, uh, having uh, an ability there in our knowledge base to have, you know, make sure you go and check these settings off. Uh, we've working with some of our MDM vendors as well along the way. And um, also we've had users that, you know, can contribute user created content as well to our uh, documentation pool. But, but yes, we're going to work on having all that uh, documentation more complete as we go forward. And Sam wants to know if we're going to do demos for Nomad Pro and Nomad Login, Octin, or Nomad Login Plus Octa. We have some on our YouTube channel already. Uh, where you can go and see there of earlier versions, and we certainly um, will have other webcasts on those as well. And um, if you're interested in those products, you can certainly send an email to our, our sales at nomad.menu, and we can work on uh, setting up an overview call with you. And I think we are at the end of our questions, unless anyone's madly typing any extras that they want to send our way. No, I think we're good. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much for joining us for our walkthrough of Nomad Login and uh, meeting with Josh Weisenbaker. And if you have any questions, like Jess said, please send them to sales at nomad.menu. And we will look forward to talking with you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.